Next, let's talk about the second approach, which is collaborative filtering. Essentially, collaborative filtering tries to harness the quality judgments of other users to make recommendations. The idea is quite simple. Let's consider user X. And if we want to make recommendations to user X, we'll first find a set N of other users whose rating is actually similar to access ratings. So these would be the users that have similar likes and dislikes as user X. And then we'll estimate access ratings based on the ratings of users in the neighborhood set. For example, let's say that we have these rating metrics and each row represents one user and each column represents a movie and this Harry Potter 1, 2, 3, Twilight and Star Wars 1, 2, 3. And we can see that user A and user B are actually quite similar because they both rated Harry Potter 1 very highly. And in, and on, and in contrast, user A and user C are actually very dissimilar because as you can see, user A gives the Twilight a very high rating, but it gives the Star Wars one a very low rating. And on the opposite, user C gives Twilight a very low rating, but gives um, Star Wars one a very high rating. So intuitively, what we want is that we want a similarity score between A and B to be larger than the similarity between A and C. So what kind of similarity matches can we use? One option is to use Jakar similarity. Remember that Jakar similarity is just the intersection over the union. So if we calculate the Jakar similarity between user A and user B, we will get the number of one over five. And similarly, the Jakar similarity between user A and user C will be two over four. And Actually, in this case, the similarity of A and B is actually smaller than the similarity of A and C, which means that your car similarity actually doesn't work in this case. And this is because your car similarity only considers the existence of ratings, but they ignore the actual values of the rating. Another option is that we can use cosine similarity, as we mentioned in the previous part. And to compute the cosine similarity, we will need two full vectors. And therefore, we will need to fill in the blanks using zeros, and then we can calculate the cosine similarities. And we can see that in terms of cosine similarity, the similarity between A and B is is finally larger than the similarity between A and C, but only slightly larger. And this is not good enough. And the reason why this happens is because cosine similarity actually considers the missing ratings as negative, because in this, in this whole rating matrix, we can see that the scale is between one to five. So zeros are actually very low and very negative ratings. So the solution to this is that we can first subtract the mean of each row, and then we can compute the cosine similarity. And specifically, for example, for, for the row corresponding to user one, we can first calculate the mean, which is 10 over three, and then we can subtract each rating by 10 over three to get the final ratings. This is like, this is equivalent to center these ratings around the average of each user. And similarly, we can have the average rating for user B as 14 over three, and we will subtract them. And then we can fill all the blanks using zeros and compute the centered version of cosine similarity. And this time we, we get a much better number. 
which is we have a similarity between A and B as 0 0.09 versus the similarity between A and C as minus 0 0.56. And this new version of cosine similarity actually captures the fact that A and C are actually very dissimilar users. And in fact, they have quite opposite taste. And this new center version of cosine similarity, it actually has a name. It's known as the Pearson correlation. And to summarize, let's say that Rx is the vector of user access ratings. And the problem of Jacquard similarity is that it ignores the value of the rating. It only cares about the existence of the rating, but this is not good enough. And the problem of cosine similarity is that it treats the missing ratings as negative, which is also not good. While the Pearson correlation coefficient, it works and it makes sense because it treats the missing values or missing ratings as average rather than negative. And now that we have figured out how to find the set of similar users, the next step is to do the actual rating predictions. And let's say that Rx, again, is the vector of ratings from user X and N is the set of K users that are most similar to the user X who also have rated item one. Then to predict the rating for item I from user X, we have at least two options. The first option is that we can simply take the, take the average of the ratings from the, from the neighboring users. So this is R sub YI and Y actually indexes the set of neighboring users. Basically, these are the set of the users that are most similar to user X. And I is indexing the item Y. So this is one option, but this option actually ignores the sim actual similarity between users. And intuitively, uh, a user who has higher similarity should have more influence on the final prediction. Therefore, we'll have the option two, which is basically a weighted average of all the ratings. And here, S, X, Y is the similarity between user X and user Y. We can see here, this is simply a weighted version of the average. And if a user has a larger similarity, it will have a larger influence on the final value or the final prediction of the rating. And so far, what we have discussed is actually called user-user collaborative filtering because we will first find a set of similar users and then we'll predict the ratings. Another view or another method of predicting ratings is we transpose these metrics and we look at it from an item item perspective. And concretely, we can, for each item I, we can first find other similar items and then we can estimate the, the rating for item I based on the ratings for similar items. And we can use the same similarity metrics and prediction functions as in the user user model. So basically this is the final equation. And here, J actually indexes the set of similar items. And SJ is a similarity between item I and item J. And RXJ is the rating from user X to item J. So this is basically a weighted average of the same user's rating on similar items. And we're using this to predict the user access rating on item I, which makes sense. Concretely, let's take a look at an example. Here we have a rating matrix where each row represents a movie and each column represents a user. And the blank 
box represents unknown ratings and the yellow box represents uh, the rating between one to five. For example, here, this entry indicates that the rating of movie one from user one is actually one. And here we set this, uh, the number of neighbors to two. So basically we will first find two nearest neighboring movies and then we will use them to predict the, the rating. So the goal is to, let's say the goal is to estimate the rating of movie one by user five. So as a first step, we will first find the two most similar items. So basically we're gonna calculate the similarity between movie one and all other movies. So these are the similarity score and it happens. And, and note that we only, we'll only include the items that user five has rated. And it happens that these two most similar items are item three and item six. So the next step would be to compute the similarity score as the weights. So the weights are simply the, the score itself. It happens to be so. And then we'll just predict the ratings here using a weighted average of two and three, which gives us 2.6. So interestingly, so far we have the user user collaborative filtering and item item collaborative filtering, right? And in theory, the item item method is, it seems to be the a dual method of the user user method. And they should have given the same predicted ratings. But in practice, it's rarely the case. In fact, in most of the cases, like in e-commerce, it has been observed that item-item collaborative filtering actually often works better than user-user collaborative filtering. Why? This is because the items are actually simpler and more stable, at least in the case of e-commerce. And users can, but users can have multiple tastes or multiple needs. For example, one item in Amazon can have only, for example, only one or two functionalities, but one single users in Amazon can have many, many different needs and many, many different tastes. But interestingly, on the contrary, in news recommendation, the method of user-user collaborative filtering actually works better than item-item collaborative filtering. So next, let's talk about the pros and cons of collaborative filtering. One obvious advantage of collaborative filtering is that it works for any kind of items and there's no need for feature selection, which is actually very time consuming and sometimes it's not even possible. Remember that it's, it's actually very difficult to, to select or construct the features for movies or tags or, or images. And this is why this type of collaborative filtering method actually so popular both in industry and also in the academia. And for the disadvantage, the first disadvantage would be the problem of user co-star. So basically we will need enough users in a system to find a match. Remember that in the user-user collaborative filtering method, we'll first find a set of similar users and then we can predict the ratings. And, and this only works if we have enough similar users. And, and of course, a, a similar disadvantage is the item post up problem because we cannot recommend new items that have not been previously rated. Remember that this is not content-based method anymore, we have to rely on the ratings to compute a similar set of users or items, and then we can predict the ratings. And the next disadvantage is 
the sparsity problem. So basically the users or rating metric is actually very sparse and it's actually very difficult to find users that have rated the same items. Again, remember that in the in the user user collaborative filtering, we'll need in order to predict a rating for item, let's say to predict a rating for item I, we will need at least a set of users who have also rated item I. And if the rating metrics are actually very sparse and it, it's, it will be then very difficult to find enough users to do so. And the last disadvantage is the popularity bias. So basically collaborative filtering, it's difficult for, for, for this method to recommend items to someone with unique taste because it's relying on the judgment of other similar users, right? So usually it's difficult to, to accommodate for users' unique taste. And it tends to recommend very popular items. For example, if a lot of users, most users in the in, in a website or in an e-commerce website, they tend to rate um, Harry Potter very highly, then there's a very high probability that the system is gonna recommend Harry Potter to every user. And so until now we have talked about both the content-based methods and collaborative filtering methods. And each have its pros and cons. And actually we can have a hybrid method which adds the content-based methods to collaborative filtering. And the nice thing about this is that we can actually use the item profiles in the collaborative filtering setting to basically alleviate the new item problem. And we can similarly use the demographics as user profile to deal with the new I sorry, to deal with the new user problem.